Dzień dobry. Moim i Państwa gościem jest dzisiaj Antoni Crawford, dyrektor operacji produkcyjnej 3M w regionie Europy Wschodniej. Welcome, sir. Good morning. <laughs> so let me start from the question uh, concerning the super hub for Europe uh, in Poland. Uh, what made 3M choose our country for such important investment? Okay, uh, so 3M, let's go back before we took the decision to invest in the super hub. Um, 3M has been operating uh, in Poland since 1991, so next year we'll be uh, serving our 30 year anniversary. And approximately 20 years ago, we had the opportunity to acquire a state run company called Viscoplast. Um, and uh, really that uh, acquisition was about uh, the ability to gain, I would say, market share of the uh, consumer health type products uh, in the Polish marketplace. Uh, we soon realized when we acquired that uh, acquisition that uh, not only was it a good fit for us in terms of expanding our, let's say, sales there, but the manufacturing capability and the workforce. Then around about 2005, uh, the opportunity came for us to acquire some land uh, uh, not far away from um, the Kowinska site on the Kowalska uh, uh, location which was to be designated as a special economic zone. And that really then started the, the journey and kind of snowballed very quickly into the, uh, the site that we have today. So we've invested in manufacturing uh, in Botslov somewhere in the region of about $600 million. So I think that's roughly about 2.4 billion or milliard um, zlotys uh, over the past uh, sort of 20 odd years. 3M uses many innovative solutions. In, uh, in your factories located in Poland and uh, other countries, right? So could you tell us more about uh, about these uh, solutions? Uh, could you share some examples? We have a lot of automation, a lot of technology already within our factories. Many people, uh, let's go back again a few years, wanted to come to Poland because of the, uh, the labor arbitrage. It was deemed to be a cost competitive country. 3M took a slightly different approach from the beginning. We said, no, we want to invest a lot of capital in here. We want to you know, automate and make this a, a sophisticated operation and about sort of working with upskilling our people. Now, as we look at the sort of digital factory or the connected factory or the um, uh, uh, you know, industry 4.0 side of things, absolutely, we're using a lot of digital technology from that. We implemented a new ERP system uh, three years ago, uh, and that's enabled us to then use you know, now an MES system that allows us to then talk with multiple different uh, uh, screens and activities. And then looking at you know, the virtual reality that you mentioned, uh, first and foremost, we use that now for a lot of training. Uh, mm -hmm. so when we have operators that are wanting to be trained to either work in a certain environment, a certain condition. Um, let me give you a very practical example, um, you know, our warehouse teams. We do have a number of automated um, um, forklift trucks or powered industrial vehicles. But we also have some vehicles where you know drivers still need to to use that. So we do that for training, refresher training, and similar in the way that um, uh, airline pilots have to go through training and flight simulators. So we, we do that kind of thing. Again, uh, we also use augmented reality, for example, particularly within maintenance. So when we're going in and wanting to uh, you know change over a part, a component, or upgrade something. Uh, we are we're using that uh, to, to to great effect, and in fact, what we're starting to also see now is because of COVID, um, what we see is that you know it's actually accelerated our needs to digital digitalize our our, our life, our working life, um, and mm. so virtual reality so and augmented reality, in fact, is is forcing us to to do things differently. So in the past, we will be sending engineers out to go and see suppliers of new machines. They would do what's known as a factory acceptance test. Again, with COVID travel being restricted, we've now had to think of innovative ways to do that. So the use of, you know, team Zoom meetings and then augmented reality to go in and inspect and see and actually kind of see how the devices work, machines work and do those types of things have been a, a very key thing from there. And then finally, uh, it's also about sort of the, you know, the big data, the digitalization that we've been working mm -hmm. on, real-time data. So we, we sort of, you know, in the past talk about preventive maintenance, then it's obviously looking at um, how do you go into kind of that prescriptive uh, um, uh, type of things and, you know, how can we then allow our joined up systems to then start to take decisions for us. Um, and more importantly, then with this kind of technology that we have, 
it's also enabling us to kind of let's say empower our people and upgrade our people um, because in terms of the decision making rights, the, the, the visibility of the data they've got, they've got it there. So they're able to sort of, you know, evolve and grow accordingly. And um, I think that's also been a nice journey and story that we've been able to talk about. 3M pays also a lot of attention to safety, right? Um, yeah. what, what do you exactly do to improve your safety uh, in your factories and to uh, implement the rule uh, safety first? Yeah, so, so, so safety, um, you know, goes without saying, you know, we want to be sure that everybody, you know, leaves our operations in the same or better condition than when they arrived. Uh, that, that, that goes without saying. Um, um, and, and, and so a lot of that is about, you know, it's about behavioral mindset, it's about training, it's about engagement. Yes, clearly there's legislative guidelines, corporate guidelines that we have to follow. And that, that's clear, that goes without saying, making sure we have guidance, uh, guarding, shall I say, e-stops, clear signage, marking, training, etc., etc. But really it's about the behavioral side of things. So, you know, how do we sort of make sure that people, um, you know, don't, do things subconsciously that they shouldn't be doing, Make, educating people, making sure they're aware of the ramifications or the consequences of what an injury can be. So we have, uh, uh, coming back to that training side of things, you know, virtual reality is a great example where we actually do training with people so they can scenario model sorts of things. Ergonomics is probably the biggest area of, um, I would say, risk for us. Uh, simply, you know, I think we're all guilty of this, even in our private lives, you know, sometimes just lifting something without correctly, you know, mm. right posture. <laughs> so how do we engage, train and educate people there? So we do a lot of workshops and a lot of, let's say, reminder sessions. Of course, there's the sort of daily stretching. There's a daily kind of crew talks that we have, as well as awareness sessions, bringing people on site to help with training engagement and also bringing in people that have maybe been uh, had a, a, you know, a, an unfortunate situation situation so they can actually relate to the consequences of somebody uh, not doing things. So it's really about stopping thinking and acting and to avoid that sort of you know, subconscious kind of uh, behaviors that we've got. And if you, you know, build upon that as part of your, main, your mindset, then, you know, your journey um, in terms of that safety culture builds upon that and it becomes self-fulfilling. I would also like to ask you about your um, environmental uh, concerns. I mean, how is your company committed to envi environmental concerns? Yeah, okay. So, so that's a, a, a nice question as well, because by default, if you're making something, you know, you have to consume energy or, or materials uh, from there. So let's start with, I would say, the consumption of energy that we use to, um, to, to produce it. So, so first and foremost, um, we have been working to ensure that, you know, with the new technology we've got, it's the most efficient technology that we have. So making sure that, you know, we don't have any, you know, inefficient, obsolete technology in terms of equipment. Second thing is then really looking at the, the types of energy that we use. Um, we are a big user of electricity is, is our primary uh, usage. And so from that, um, we've done one of two things, in fact. So number one is we actually have our own uh, energy generating capability on site that generates around about 30% of our power. Um, but as of uh, 2021, so next year, in fact, actually in a few weeks time, we will be switching to 100% uh, renewable energy sources, guaranteed of origin sources. And whilst in parallel, we're also working with a number of, let's say, service providers to see how we can be 100% self-sufficient in terms of energy generation, either through photovoltaic, wind, and other, let's say, means. So it's the journey that we're, we're working on there, but the first one is to ensure that all 3M um, owned facilities will be uh, ensuring that our energy sources are coming from guaranteed of origin green sources. So that's the first step that we can uh, do and we are implementing as of uh, 2021. Then the second component of that is obviously the materials that we use. The key thing is we use materials and materials get converted, produced, made, and there's a byproduct. Okay. So what do we do with that byproduct that we have? You know, it's perceived as it waste. So number one, we have zero landfill. Any waste that we have does not go into the ground. It goes into a secondary life, either going into be recycled 
Okay, so where we can recycle it or reuse it to, to produce another product, we do that. Um, or, you know, we are able to work with a number of partners where the product can then be reapplied to different applications. So, for example, we have some uh, waste products that are actually quite useful in the road building industry. So that goes into that, which is unrelated to our business structure that we have. Um, or it goes into uh, energy creation as well. So we, we, we ensure that nothing goes into, in, into landfill. Um, and, you know, the reasons we, we look at uh, this, we talk about the whole sort of, you know, environmental sustainability subject. Generally speaking, the more sustainable you are, I would say the more efficient you are. And um, by, by default, by efficiency, it means you are then more cost effective. If you become more cost effective, you then become more profitable uh, uh, to, to, to your shareholders. And clearly your customers of the other side of things want to ensure that they're buying a product that is, uh, is well managed and sustainable as well. Your super hub, uh, Priam General, is one of the biggest uh, employers in uh, Wrocław. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the company which supports uh, supports uh, local commu uh, communities. So, could you tell me uh, uh, how you do this, and uh, and could you share some examples? Sure. Um, so, in fact, again, COVID has really sort of made us have to think and adapt differently to how we do things. So. In the past, let's say you talk about 2019, for example, um, we did a, a lot of, let's say, educational training. So we'd bring schools in, uh, students from the university to come in, see our technology. There was a number of, let's say, collaborative activities that we've been supporting, uh, working with STEM, women in tech and, and other things as well. Um, and then obviously fast forward now with COVID, you know, all the actions that we've been doing where we've been out in either having the community come to us, engaging or training, or where we've also gone out to a couple of uh, uh, institutions that we support. We have a couple of uh, children's homes that, and care homes that we support. We've had to obviously, you know, suspend those activities. So we financially support them through other means, um, uh, for example, providing a minibus that uh, one of the, uh, the homes uses. But the fact that we've had 3M people, 3Mers wanting to go out and help people, we've had to suspend that because of social distancing needs and cross-contamination, particularly with individuals that have been, I would say, more vulnerable to, uh, to uh, the COVID situation. Nevertheless, we haven't stopped. Um, let me give you two, uh, I think, quite good practical examples. So our local school, school number eight, um, when first wave kicked in uh, and they went to uh, remote learning, uh, mm -hmm. the school approaches and said that we have a, an issue uh, in the fact that, um, you know, a number of the pupils don't have access to computers, uh, you know, the, the families don't yes. have them. So we yes, quickly, we quickly uh, were able to, you know, donate a number of laptops to them and then when things got better in the summer we then started to talk to them and say well we believe there's going to be a second wave and you know unfortunately we were correct mm -hmm. um and so we then also expanded our, our it equipment support to the school so that you know both teachers but also um pupils have access to it equipment that enables them to continue that remote learning so that's the first thing. The second thing we had was, again, when the, the pandemic kicked in, um, we had a, a, another situation where, like everybody, we were impacted by certain demand uh, on certain value streams. And so certain lines that we had were, let's say, became reavailable. So we, we looked to retool them, repurpose them for other applications. At the time, there was a shortage of uh, face shields, so visors, basically. Mm -hmm. And so we worked with, uh, you know, a couple of our, our engineers who are sort of you know supporting uh, a couple of institutions we, we repurposed our water jet cutters to cut out uh, I think we had about 35,000 shields uh, which were needed for people you know in, in the front lines so not respirators but face shields to just uh, protect yes. from that so two very simple practical examples where we had to quickly adapt to support that then there's been a number of things where we've worked with you know other institutions in terms of um, uh, providing catering services to uh, homes that were not able to uh, get uh, uh, the, their cooks, for example, fell ill with COVID, so they weren't able to cook. So we did all the, our, our canteen, our on-site canteen, uh, provided uh, three meals a day uh, for uh, several weeks, basically, for the home, for them to continue to, for the teams to eat. 
So different things really. Um, and then as you know, there's the, uh, let's say the, uh, the, 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 the uh, sponsored run. And this year where many companies do this, uh, obviously 3M wanted to partake in that, but again, everybody had to do this, you know, remotely and wow. social events in their home, in their garden, rather than the big <laughs> event had. So again, you know, different creative ways of managing the situation, but we certainly don't want to stop any of that uh, CSR type activity, community activity. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> 3M invests a lot of money uh, in R&D right uh, one of such investments is um, 3m innovation center mm -hmm. uh, could you tell me something more about uh, the idea behind it yeah sure generally uh you know 3m is you know our motto is science applied to life um and uh we as a company globally uh we typically invest around about six percent of our overall global revenues into um R and D uh, activities mm -hmm. uh, because you know we have to invest in the future. We have to look at you know you can't stand still from that. And again, we're very lucky that we have um, uh, a number of R and D facilities here in on the super hub. So you know we can test, pilot, and develop uh, side of things. Um, and you know that's enabled us to continue to grow. We can work with customers. So you know our idea is to say, okay, a customer can come to us and say, well, we have a problem we have a difficulty in doing a certain thing and then we can provide a, a technical solution an innovative solution to uh, help the customer in terms of uh, their, their their application or whatever the, the role they do in, in making it easier faster quicker more efficient whichever metric you wish to use uh, to, to to support that and again additionally we also uh, have a number of technologies that enable us to go to um, customers and say, well, okay, maybe you did it this way. If you use this type of application or this type of product here, then we can um, we can do that uh, differently for you. And then our innovation center actually enables uh, our customers to actually come in and see these products for real, feel it, sense it. Uh, we also, very, again, before COVID, we, we, we wanted to also bring in our, our customers to see our facilities, to showcase what we do, to see that it's operating in a safe, modern, clean, sustainable environment. And then the innovation we center we also use is, uh, again, as I mentioned, in the community sort of things, schools, educational institutions come in to, to, to see that. But we also have a technical center, which actually allows us to physically carry out maybe some exercises, some applications, some activities to uh, for our customers to use. Um, as I mentioned to you before, we produce a number of PPE equipment um, uh, in uh, you know in in, in, in like a super hub site, and um, PPE equipment is obviously as I say some some stuff that helps with breathing, but we also uh, do some products that support fall protection. So these are the harnesses that people use if they're climbing at heights. Mm -hmm. um, and for example, there coming back to the community, we actually work with the fire brigade. They can come in and use our equipment to do their testing, their scenario model, their crisis management side of things as well. And again, additionally, we also use the fire brigade comes in and uses our facilities to do kind of, let's say, training and mock drills uh, for their, for their, for their uh, firefighters. Thank you very much for this interesting conversation. Thank you for having me. Take care now. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.